Hello, Swiveheads. This is Greg Allison from Green Rigs coming to you on the 16th of January, 22. Time on deck is 2049 hours Central Standard Time. My friends, I brought you a video just yesterday talking about Tonga. Well, I've got an update for you. This update really confirms something that I mentioned in my video yesterday, and that is that this thing can indeed erupt multiple times. In fact, there has been a survey done of that site looking at the historical eruption record of Tonga, and they found a huge caldera there, this volcano, a huge caldera. And they looked around for evidence of past eruptions, and they, and they discovered you know, it had you know, several minor eruptions, but uh, the volcanoes around the caldera, but the calderic eruptions, the big ones, occur about every 1,000 years. Well, the last one being at about 1100 AD. So not yet, quite a thousand years ago, but pretty close. So, and the other thing they discovered was this. Every time it erupted in the past from the caldera, there were several big calderic explosions. Yes, several. And these have occurred, it, they could all occur soon, or maybe within you know, days, weeks, or maybe spanning a few years. But what this underscores, I was talking about Krakatoa as an analogy. That Krakatoa, when it went off, had several large success explosions spanning better than a week. So with that in mind, so I'm talking about nuclear winter. That's what I really worry about. Most of all from volcanic explosions is something that can affect our climate that can impact us here where we're at. And this isn't the only volcano to be concerned about. I'm going to show you, you know, some volcanoes around the world. We're going to kind of go back in the volcano topic again today. Uh, I've covered this a few times in the past uh, from various different angles. And so we're going to look at it today. And we're going to look at uh, the data here on this volcano. And we're going to look at uh, some of the other stuff out there. So the prospects for a volcanic winter may be on the rise, given the explosion we just had from Tonga and other activity going on in the world today. And as I said previously, it's possible that a number of smaller volcanoes could contribute to that. And this could be on the order of the Pinatubo event, which did cause global temperatures to drop. Or we could have something on the order of the Tambora explosion in 1815, which caused the 1816 year without a summer, which was catastrophic in today's world of mass mechanized agriculture and already suffering from uh, <laughs> all these uh, supply chain issues that we have today. And the fact that China's hoarding grain, uh, you gotta wonder what might happen. You just gotta wonder how bad it could get. And if that weren't enough, uh, it's just a good thing to know that the whole world's at peace, that we don't have to worry about nuclear winter. Oh, well, yeah, we got this little thing with the Ruskies and the Chinese going on right now. And we're told that even if uh, Iran and uh, or Orfa, uh, Pakistan and India got into it, some claim that could lead to a nuclear winter that would affect us. But definitely the United States and Russia, ooh, that could be ugly. So we have to be prepared. We got to get ready for these kind of events in our prepping suite. Uh, one of the main things I tell you for prepping is gardening. And when you garden, you put up your vegetables, save them, which means you need to garden more than you eat preferably if you can do that. Now, some people live in the city and, and all you can do is maybe grow some things on a balcony or in a window, window and that's doable. And you can grow microgreens in your house and a window for you know, it's about three days. Almost. And I've got videos on doing that because I used to grow them in my living room right up here. <laughs> I down grow them in a trailer right up there. So um, but I also done quite, quite a few videos on gardening. And uh, so, and there's more you gotta do than that though. You're gonna have to have long-term food storage. But for these kind of videos on garden and eating free from the weeds and trees, which you might not get a whole lot of in the nuclear winter because nothing's going to be growing for, for a bit, uh, you need to subscribe to my channel, bang the notification bell, and click all to get more of my videos on, on things like this too, which I, this is part of my eyes wide open and head on the swivel series, guys, so you'll know what's coming. And that's why I brought you this video back today, just to let you know that this is a real possibility, even more so with Tonga than I had imagined. Uh, a lot of volcanoes, they're, they're one-offs. They pop, and then, you know, a couple hundred years later, they pop again, maybe. Uh, but Tonga is one of those, it's kind of like Krakatoa, apparently. Although Krakatoa may have more frequent, be more frequent than this. 
Yeah, that goes, this one goes, don't know, just go boom. It goes boom, 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 boom. And it's quiet. It goes boom, boom, boom. Maybe some other little periphery uh, eruptions. All right, we're going to get all into this data. I'm going to show it to you from uh, some articles. Uh, and oh, yeah, before we go there, <laughs> just remember if you have a volcanic winter, you better be saving those seeds uh, for when the, the clouds clear away and it warms up. And then you're going to wish you doing your own because the entire infrastructure is going to be gone. That's why you do need to go seeds. Check my link to Tree Leaf Market for your seeds. And now's a good time to order for the springtime planting here in the wintertime. It's time to order seeds now, guys. But anyway, all that, especially before all the supply chain stuff gets in them, too big of a mess. But all that said, do go with to prepwithgreg.com because prepwithgreg.com, we got a special right now, $100 off three uh, uh, a 25-year uh, uh, storage life food. Uh, you get twenty. Uh, excuse me, hundred dollars off a of three month supply. Hundred dollars off a of three month supply of food that lasts you twenty five years. It's breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Two thousand calories a day. It's a whole lot better deal than a lot of competitors that offer uh, eight hundred calories a day, which is a starvation diet, my friends. But this is real food: breakfast, lunch, and dinner. A deal to make you a winner. And it's lightweight because it's free dry. And it makes real food. I missed the handle. <laughs> Not always as smooth today on some days as other. I started my day really early today in my greenhouse. That's another thing. Greenhouses grow indoors. That's another way to, to get through the cold climbs. But you may have to put artificial lighting in them uh, if the sun is not coming through. Just bear that in mind. You got to have ways to keep your crops warmer and ways to uh, keep it going. And I'll cover more of that in the future, too. But do check out prepwithgrade.com. And, and look at the specials while they're available, while the food's available, before the supply chain just wrecks everything. So, uh, and there's quite a demand going on and the spectrum food process is going to be going up quite a bit. I can do another video on that soon. So let's go into this and look at some of these, uh, look into some of these other articles here. This is a main one I wanted to show you, why volcanic eruption in Tonga is so violent and what to expect next. We're going to pick on this, what to expect next part. And this comes to you from a professor of earth sciences from the University of Auckland. So he's in the area there, guys. And so he is a scientist who examines these kind of things in that neighborhood. Um, so we won't, have, we won't read this article. I'm not gonna go through everything you've seen before in here because you've seen it before. But look at this uh, uh, caldera here, guys. This is a kilometer right here, a kilometer, which is 0.6 of a mile, over half a mile, six tenths of a mile is a kilometer. So get this, this is the caldera. This is the whole range of this volcano right here. This is the caldera center, okay, excuse me. The dotted line is the caldera. This is a caldera center right here. And it put up a couple of islands and recently in 2015 connected them with a the center column here. Uh, but uh, the, he said the volcano is not much to look at. Two smaller islands connected. Okay. Uh, so I'm not going to read his article per se, but we will take excerpts from it. He actually, this was republished with a creative license. So I actually probably could reread the whole thing uh, <clears throat> as long as I'm creative about it, right? <laughs> uh, so here he says the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haape. I hope I said that right now. It's a long name. That's a heck of a name. That's the actual name of the volcano, guys. The Hunga Tonga Hunga Haape <laughs> volcano has erupted regularly over the past few decades during the events of 20, 2009 and 2014-15. Hot jets of magma and steam exploded through the waves, but these eruptions are small, dwarf the scale, you know, compared to this recent event uh, of just a couple of days ago, January uh, uh, this year. He says, our research into these early eruptions suggests that this is one of the massive explosions of the volcanic ship we're producing uh, roughly every thousand years. And he goes into uh, here talking about the, uh, how uh, if you throw in enough magma, it overcomes the cooling effects of the seawater. Uh, I'm not gonna go on like so like I'm not gonna read his article and that's not my main point here. What he talks about is two different scales of the, 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 the eruptions out of this volcano. And they're the smaller ones. And then the, the gigantic curtain raisers. So he said that this uh, 2016 event was uh, a curtain raiser for the main event, which just occurred. 
That's an interesting way to put it. <laughs> it's like a, kind of the pre-show. Clearing the throat, you know, the, the lady about to sing the opera, clearing her throat. That's all that other stuff was. The caldera is a crater uh, in the central light depression about five kilometers across. Small eruptions such as in 2019, 2014, and 15 occur mainly at the edge of the caldera, but very big ones come from the caldera itself. I mean, it's erupting from the center. These big eruptions are so large that the top of the erupting magma chamber collapses. That's after, of course, it collapses and it fills in. That's why you got a hole called caldera. That's what happens at the caldera to explode events. And all the are caldera type volcanoes. And the, cal the volcanoes that form calderas are the most explosive ones, uh, including the super volcanoes, which we didn't even recognize as volcanoes because that's all they were was calderas. And so we're, we're seeing them as kind of uh, after the facts. Oh my gosh, look what monster this is. Looking at the chemistry of past eruptions, we now think these small eruptions represent the magma system slowly recharging itself to prepare for the main event. Let's hope Yellowstone gives us a warning like that, not just blow its top all at once one day. Let's hope it has to clear its throat too before it goes boom, 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 big time. That's what some people expect, but you never know. <laughs> Uh, you know, Krakatoa cleared his throat, went boom, big time, all within the course of, you know, a few days. So that can happen, guys. It might be a few years like this one or a few days. Uh, we found evidence of the two uh, huge past eruptions from the Hunga Caldera in deposits of the old islands. And they said it had about every thousand years, AD 1100, as I said earlier. And... Uh, well, we can expect to happen now. And yeah, he said it stepped up its violence, got the ash plume 20 kilometers high. And look, the diameter of the ash plume was 260 kilometers. I believe I calculated that earlier, be something like 156 miles, if I recall my calculation. Uh, that's huge, guys. And this shows it out. This is where the winds destroyed it, uh, you know, ripped it apart. Huge, huge, huge plume. That's about the explosive power, the tsunamis, the blast wave. Look, that blast wave running around the world. You can see it clearly, very definitively from the satellite photographs of the videos, the blast wave. And I showed that in my previous video on this. So I don't want to go back and show you what I've already showed you. You can just go see that video. Um, all these signs uh, suggest the large hunger Caldera has awoken. Tsunamis are generated coupled with atmospheric shock, ocean, a, atmospheric and ocean so, shock waves during explosion. Okay, we see that you need to get the submarine landslides. It's going to cause more tsunamis. So what he said here is unclear if this is the climax of the eruption. That means that this could have a larger eruption yet. It remains unclear if this is the climax of the eruption. It represents a major magma pressure release, which may settle the system. Hope and pray for that. A warning, however, lies in the geological deposits from the volcano's previous eruptions. These complex sequences show that each of the thousand year major called their eruption episodes involved many separate explosive events. Okay, see, this is the key. Each of the previous 100 year called their eruption episodes involved many separate explosion events. So that would suggest that it's more likely than not that there's more of these to come over the next few days, weeks, or years. Not saying it will happen. He says, you know, he hopes it's, it, that this has settled the system. And he says, hence we could be in for several weeks or even years of major volcanic unrest from Hunga Tonga Hunga Hape volcano. For the sake of the people of Tonga, and I agree with him here, I hope not. It's not just for the sake of the people of Tonga, it's for the sake of the people of the world. We could get more tsunamis, more severe tsunamis, and uh, 
the calderic explosion could bring us into a uh, volcanic winter. This could be Pinatubo-like or worse. I'm not sure that previous uh, volcanic explosion quite takes us to the Pinatubo level, but it might because it did come from under the sea. It came from the caldera, not the center cone on the side. So it had a lot to overcome to get to that altitude. So did, did it put out the same amount of, uh, of carbon, uh, I mean, of uh, silicon dioxide and ashes of Pinatubo explosion? I don't think so, but it might have. I mean, it went up to uh, 12 uh, miles instead of 20 miles, like uh, uh, not quite as high as the Pinatubo explosion, but it had, further to, it had more to come up out of. It had to rise up out of that ocean. But it did have a huge uh, uh, plume, diameter-wise, huge, huge, and it's easy to see from the satellites. So in that regard, it may be more. But how many of these would it take? Uh, if this thing keeps going, we may have the effects of a Pinatubo or even a, a Tambora event. The next, it may be a single explosion may give us a Tambora event out of this. It is a caldera. It is the kind of volcanoes that erupt very badly and cause problems. Uh, we could look at just a couple of videos here real quick of some of the tsunamis. Got, look, Chile, Peru, and Ecuador got hit really hard. Let's see. What you see these ships to see out here? The waves come. When you see a big wave at sea, you know you got a big wave coming. Look at that, guys. Look at that, guys. Because it's in land where it really piles up. You see that? You know the guys at land, I'm sure, are going to be in trouble when it gets to them. Look at that, guys. So I'm going to go forward a little bit more. So I'm not here to play their video. I'm just showing you snippets. And this is downtown. One of the cities there in South America. Yeah, see, that's what happens before the wave hits. The water goes out to sea. And then it comes back. So when you see that, you, you don't need to be standing around. You need to get for higher ground. As soon as you see that water rushing, back out to sea, like it is there, head to a higher ground cause a tsunami will come behind that. It goes out to sea and it comes back. And there it is coming back. Let's see, I'm just gonna do snippets of it. Uh, there it's pulled out. Yeah, there's different videos from different people, different cameras all put in together here. He's pointing to the waves coming. These people need to get a little hurry on there. I wouldn't be on the beach down there so close, just dragging. Some of these people are a little bit on the casual side. I'll be hitting some higher ground pretty fast. All right. We're not going to play any more of that one, but I just wanted you to see some snippets there. Uh, a lot of other articles and videos out here on this stuff. You can look them up. Sandbar. Oh, like a party on that one. <laughs> I'm going to close this tab so I don't have so many tabs open. Hang on. My Zoom is fighting me. <laughs> Guys, you need to know about volcanic winters. I got a video, nuclear and volcanic winter prepping, okay? Nuclear and volcanic winter prepping. I've also got, considering the, the st uh, stress we're in right now with Russia and China, you need to really check out nuclear bug out safe zone shelters. But this is more than the shelters. This is about the radiation and, and dealing with the effects of the war, what you gotta see. I don't know if I can play a snip of this or something so I can kind of let you see some of what's in here. Uh, this is an hour and 18 minutes. I'm definitely not going to play it in this video. Uh, let's see if I can just take a couple. Keep the eyes wide. Oh, shoot. Man, we're getting that. We're very here. satisfied. <laughs> well, I'm not going to play this because that adds four seconds, but there's, there's various pieces in there that you'll want to see. How many active, so I go into how to show, I go into different forms of radiation, children form and things like that. That's a, how to build shelters, uh, how to take care of your farm animals. I cover a lot of it, topics in that video that you really need to see. 
How many uh, active volcanoes are there on Earth? There are about 1,350 potentially active world, uh, volcanoes worldwide. And they're not counting the continuous belt of volcanoes and ocean floor which spread in far like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Okay, about 500 of those 1350 volcanoes have erupted in historic times. That may not sound so bad, but some of them have erupted multiple times. Uh, so we're going to go in a little bit and I'll show you the, the uh, link to the volcanoes that are erupting right now. Can eruption at one. So there's a lot of interesting things here. Can do volcanoes affect weather? Yes, volcanoes can affect weather and Earth's climate. Following the 1991 eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the Philippines, cooler than normal temperatures are recorded worldwide and brilliant sunsets. I remember those sunsets. They were beautiful red sunsets. Uh, and this is again, it comes from the sulfur dioxide, which I've mentioned many times in here. How much of the earth is volcanic? 80% of the earth's surface is believed to come from volcanoes. So they're not a bad thing. If it wasn't for volcanoes, we might not be here. <laughs> They do enrich the soil. They have a lot of beneficial uh, attributes to a volcano, but living with them is a bit rough, guys. <laughs> it's a bit rough. All right, here we are. Which volcanoes are currently erupting? Now, I want you to see this index here. Uh, <clears throat> eruption. The red means volcanoes erupt in. That means active, erupting. Yellow means uh, unrest, volcanoes with at least minor eruptive activity or eruptions, warning. It's a warning, maybe a waning. That's the, uh, this is the uh, orange. All volcanoes, uh, unrest or uh, some volcanoes will at least some sign of unrest or yellow. They have some sign of unrest or yellow. That means you got to worry about them. And this includes things like Campe uh, uh, Floregi, or however you say that. This one uh, near Naples is a, basically a super volcano, almost a super volcano. It is a huge volcano that could take out Naples. It would be a very bad eruption. Etna is in Italy. Stromboli is in Italy. Dang it, some major ones over here. Volcano. Of course, La Palma, that's, that's one that's yellow now because it's not erupted now. You know, they just erupted. Uh, Semi, this is one that uh, Diamond likes to pronounce. That's a little bit beyond my tongue in the Lucian Islands. <laughs> Semi, so Pokanoi, I don't know. <laughs> Kilauea, I can say wolf, I can pronounce that. Yasser, uh, was it named after Eric? I don't think so. Great uh, Sitkin, that's in the Lucian Islands. So just look at all these red ones. These are volcanoes that erupt, and everything red is erupted. Apparently, according to this, Strombolis are erupting right now. Uh, Etna, maybe it's light eruptions. I know they have been erupting. So, uh, ring of fire. Let's see. Does this include Pacific Ocean, other regions? I need to find this volcano that just went off. I think it's actually colored yellow right now. This claims it's updated. It's got today's date on it. Last updated 11 minutes ago or something like that. Well, that's the last time I loaded this. Okay, so you can get guaranteed tours from Stromboli to, Et to Etna. Okay, yeah, in Italy, that's easy to do. So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna open this up. We can see it a little better. This map. And here they are, guys. Kilauea, well, Kilauea has been operating, erupting continuously for a while. Here we are. This is the Toga volcano. It's turned yellow now. But apparently, they had, they're having some earthquakes around there still, which means it's unsettled, uh, which might be, a, this might suggest an, another eruption coming. Or it could be the, the side slipping down. I, like, I wish I could blow this up some more. Look here. All these volcanoes and on the our side of the ring of fire here. Mexico, Central America, South America, over here in the Caribbean. Canary Islands is now yellow. 
Iceland volcanoes are now yellow. This is one we've been worried about, the great Sitkin volcano. And I got some out here going off right now. This one, just mentioned a minute ago, the big long name. <laughs> so there we go, guys. Again, here we are at the Hunga Tonga, the Hunga Tonga Hunga Haape volcano. What a name. <laughs> but the worst names are the ones over in uh, Iceland. Holy smoke, those names, some of them are, are rough to pronounce. There's one of them particularly starts with E. It's got a heck of a long name to it. Challenges my tongue. Oh, yeah. I think this should show more of volcanoes in Antarctica. <laughs> Erebus is far from the only one. So there's some stuff missing on here. So you can get a lot of data from here. This is volcanosandearthquakes.com, my friends. Check out volcanosandearthquakes.com. That's what this, uh, for that, this is volcanodiscovery.com. Okay. Yeah, they showed them tsunamis here, the one that just went off. So they try to keep this updated. This is one of the go-to sites a lot of your prepping channels go to right off to show what's going on volcanically around the world. So now let's look at super volcanoes. <clears throat> Let's hit this map real quick. This is a map of all the super volcanoes. This is that one, uh, Campe Ferregi, or however you pronounce it, uh, near Naples, right here. This is Santa, uh, how do you pronounce that? Sanatoria, whatever, the one that made that island there that's got all those beautiful homes on it now. <laughs> yeah, but it's, uh, it went off about 1500 BC. Uh, well, and it, some people think that is attributed a lot of the things that happened uh, in the days of Moses, the great plagues of Egypt, uh, or because of this volcano going off. Uh, look at this, New Brunswick. It's got a big volcano up there, guys. Uh, or is that Newfoundland? There may be a Newfoundland there. We're we'll looking closer. So we got uh, the red dots are the super volcanoes. We know of Yellowstone. Uh, some of these are not so active, hopefully. Uh, look here, they got V8 and V7. So right here is the location of Krakatoa. And it's built on a new mountain called a not Krakatoa. Why is that not showing here? This is the one we know of in New Zealand, but the one that just erupted was probably a VE7 air Tonga. Tonga is not listed. None of the submarine volcanoes are on this list. There's oceanic volcanoes. And there's probably tons of oceanic volcanoes we just don't know about. Two thirds of the world's ocean, guys. And we just don't know what's on the ocean floor in this, at this level of knowledge, clearly, because they're only going to show the one in Tonga. And this uh, geologist I just showed you was already studying this. He'd already found that. So this chart is not that well detailed like it should be. Uh, if it was a good chart, it'd be interactive. You'd be able to click on these that tell you about them, but they don't do that. Just blows it up a little bit. <laughs> anyway, so you get rid of that one. Uh oh, got rid of the whole article. Didn't mean to do that. So there we are, my friends. There are a lot of super volcanoes in the world. Uh, the VE sevens are are very powerful. Pinatubo. I should go back and see if Pinatubo was on. I don't think Pinatubo was on that. Well, Pinatubo was not even on that list. Pinatubo was not even a VE7, guys. So there we go, my friends. Uh, I'll blow this map up again. This one here. Tons of volcanoes. Taiwan. Oh, yeah. One super volcano is one of the VE7 volcanoes right on the border of China and North Korea. It happens to be the mountain North Korea was doing their nuclear test on, and China got very upset because that mountain started waking up volcanically. And China got very concerned that North Korea was about to set off a volcano. And basically, they tried to demand them to quit testing there. And it had a lot to do with the, those tests not continuing at that point from there forward. Yeah, they're not showing this on this side, they're showing all these over here. Yeah, look guys, this is tons of volcanoes, guys, tons of them in here. I wish I could blow this up some more and go in deeper, detailed wolf volcano. 
San Gay. Yeah, it's just, 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 just too small to really do justice what we like to look at. All right, there we are, guys. But you can come in here and look at these. Incoming you quake alerts. Well, I don't want to click all. <laughs> you know, the green ones on here. I can't even see all the... I really just see the orange, the red ones right now. But anyway, red is past 24 hours, okay? Red means it's went off in the past 24 hours. Oh, that's uh, past 48 hours. Okay, that's why this is this color. Past 48 hours, uh, okay, on this map. Wow, we got a lot of volcanic activity in the world, guys. So there you go, I'm stop the share. There's a lot of volcanic activity in this world. As I said earlier, volcanic activity has been on an uptick. And what we can see, you know, and a lot of people say that happens in the Rand Silver Metal. And you, know, you look at the maps, you know, guys like Diamond from Oppenheimer Ranch Project, he's shown that in several graphs and several others. So um, there you are. We've got a volcano that's just went off with a very powerful explosion, the most powerful explosion we've ever seen on satellite, which I guess means it's in a way, maybe bigger than kind of depot. And it may go off again and again and again. Uh, people have asked me, well, uh, will all that be contained in the Southern Hemisphere? Most of the sulfur dioxide probably will be contained within the Southern Hemisphere, but some of it is liable to spill over in our hemisphere. If it goes off enough times, it could really affect us here too. So the Southern Hemisphere cools down enough. That does change the albedo of the planet to an enough degree that we can feel some of the effects here. You know, we might be not be directly under as much uh, sulfur dioxide, maybe not, but there's still so much to be going off in other locations that can kick stuff into the stratosphere that we've got plenty to be concerned about. So if this one brings us, a, 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 even though it's in the Southern Hemisphere, a, uh, I need to do some research on that. I think it has been the case that uh, the, uh, the, the, the event in, I believe it's uh, 536 AD, <coughs> I think it did occur further south in effect the northern hemisphere it affected Rome. It affected uh, the, the, the the people living on the uh, Caucasus steeps and places in Europe, and propel them to invade Rome. So that's my, and and I think there were some food problems growing food in Europe at the time, but it hit Central America pretty hard. Civilizations there. So uh, there there have been a number of events. I showed you a list of them in my last video. If you want to see that, go back to that video. I'm not going to read, uh, show the same stuff over again here in this video. Well, my friends, the thing is this: there is such a thing as volcanic winter. It's happened many times. It can be a varying degrees, like Pinatubo, which is you know gets a little bit cooler and you get a little bit more snow. Might give you some earlier frost. Might mess your crops up somewhat. Uh, but if it comes in hand in hand in glove with a grand solar minimum, that might amplify and make it worse, perhaps, perhaps. That said, if you look at uh, all these different volcanoes going off, they could, they could also uh, each contribute enough to be like a bigger one. But like I said, you could have anything from like the Mount Pinatubo event, which I kind of enjoyed that one. <laughs> well, my greenhouse today, I might not enjoy it till I get it shored up some more. Because we have some really good snows and air storms here. And beautiful sunsets, though. I kind of like that part. Beautiful sunsets. Uh, farmers probably didn't enjoy it as much as I did at the time. <laughs> I wasn't farming at that point in time either. But then there was also, um, uh, you know, uh, Tambora in 1815. Caused the year without a summer. That would be catastrophic today. That today would be catastrophic. As tight as our uh, food supply is, with all, we're facing food supply challenges right now. That's the last thing we need is something like that. Even a Tambora, I mean, even a uh, Mount Pitubo today would be pretty bad. It would stress our systems pretty bad. Uh, so what's this going to add up to? What are we going to get out of this event? I don't know yet, but it can go again. And there could be other events like this could happen in other places of the world. So a volcanic winter is something to be concerned with. But on top of that, with everything going on in the world right now, nuclear winter. Maybe that should be your biggest thing to be on, 
on the lookout for right now, the nuclear alarm. That means you're not only going to prepare for the cold weather, but you better prepare for how to deal with the radiation. I go in great depth on that in that video I was just showing you earlier. So pay attention, guys. Eyes wide open and head on a swivel. Don't panic. Never panic. But be prepared. Be ready. Be prepared internally. Be right with your maker. And don't have open disputes in your family. So your disputes. Make peace with your loved ones. Try to get along. More than all, most of all, tell them you love them every chance you get. That's important, guys. And hey, for something to happen, and then realize you didn't tell somebody you love them. Or you're not here to tell them anymore. You know, it's not just these kind of events, it can be anything. Life changing events can happen in a snap of a finger when you least expect them. And they do. It happens all the time, especially car wrecks. Every, you know, one second, everything's fine. The next second, the world is upside down. Been there. <laughs> Luckily, I got through, but you never know. You just never know. So, you know, life is precious. Enjoy it while you got it. Stop and smell the roses when you can. Laugh every chance you get. Even though the world is looking grim, you can't just sit around and gnaw your fingers off. We've always had challenges in this world. Don't just sit around and gnaw your fingers off and make, you know, we're put here by the greater creator to in part to, to uh, appreciate this world, that he, the, this great creation. So appreciate it, enjoy it, smell the roses, enjoy the sunsets. But, and, and enjoy the fact that you can meet with people that you love and share that. But prepare mainly for them and yourself. Get ready for the worst. And let's hope and pray that those preps are more of an insurance. They might be a good investment given future inflation <laughs> or just good skills to develop. Look, if you're growing your own garden, you're eating better food. It's cleaner. It's better for you. <laughs> you got to benefit no matter what happens. If you're storing your own food, heck yeah. Or anything else you can store and put up. It's all an investment in the future, guys, especially considering scarcities that may be coming and inflation. All right. Well, that I'm going to say thank you for watching and everybody have an awesome day. Great.